الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ continue on in our study of have mercy upon Salafia the Sheikh mentioned he said have mercy upon Salafia you need to know what the people expect from you especially outside of this country, meaning Saudi Arabia, because the Sheikh is from Saudi Arabia. You do, do not dictate your differences to other countries that are in need of the knowledge and iman of the least knowledgeable and least righteous of us. So here, is something very, very important for us and significant of what the Sheikh said. And this is something we've discussed and reflected and mentioned for years that is it really necessary that all the differences that Saudi Arabia has or the ulama, which are our ulama of Ahl Sunnah, in Saudi Arabia, is it necessary to articulate and bring every dispute and fitna that's taken place in Medina, for example, or in Hail, or in Jizan, or in Jeddah, or in Dammam, and take that to Seattle, Washington, for example, or to take that to Ontario, Canada, or to take that to Gothenburg, uh, Gothenburg Sweden? or to take that fitna to Birmingham. And this is one of the big mistakes we have found from many du'at, is that they test the people and bring the fitna, for example, the latest fitna. Do we really benefit from what's going on between Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi and Sheikh Rabi' and Sheikh Ubaid and other fitna that just keeps going and growing when we are just struggling to survive in our countries? We have people don't know whether it's halal or haram to work in the grocery store. We have people that struggle with trying to raise their children. We have people whose children are homosexual. We have children that are about to go to jail for smoking crack and selling dope. But really, do we really need to know who is the Sa'afaka and who is this and that? Really? I, I don't see the relevance. I don't. Maybe someone can educate me who's listening or you can bring it to those du'at that are more knowledgeable and maybe they could in a nice and gentle way explain to me what is the relevance for our communities. How does that benefit us in our daily practice? How does that help the sister who's divorced with three kids get her children to childcare and afford that? How does a sister that can't get married, that's looking or been divorced 17 times in a community, how does that help them in their daily struggle and how does that help them understand Salafia better? How does that bring them closer to Allah? So that's what I'm wondering because I saw this fitna from years of how many people who didn't know Surah Al-Fatiha, who test the people with Abu Hassan Ma'rabi. And I'll tell you a true story and I've related this in many of my lectures. This is true. A brother that I know who was a Sufi when I first met him. And then he became a hardcore tekfiri jihadi with the, a lot of the other people that I grew up in Islam with, that they were influenced by uh, Faisal and Abu Hamza Misri uh, and, and other tekfiris and Abu Qatada Philistini. So this brother was once upon that. And then I met him many years later. And alhamdulillah, Allah guided him to Salafiyah. And he related this story to me when he was new to Salafia. He went somewhere uh, uh, in, in America, on the East Coast somewhere, or in the Mideast. 
and Midwest, what have you. And he said that he came, he met some brothers that were, you know, claiming their Salafi. The first thing they came and said to him, what's your position on Abu Hassan Ma'arabi? What did the brother say who was new to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah? He said, I, I don't know, I, I've never heard of uh, Abu Hassan. And then they said, Masalama, and they walked away. This is a true story, he related this to me. And this brother is a brother now who migrated to Canada, and I won't mention his name, and, and, and with the Troyd uh, Institute or what have you. And so, this shows you a lack of fiqh on the part of those individuals, meaning a lack of understanding, a lack of knowledge, ilm, a lack of fiqh fi deen with da'wil Allah, it shows that they, they didn't have any of that. Because how is it you test someone, you don't know him, Abu, ha uh, Abu Hassan Ma'rabi was a fitna in Yemen, in a remote place in Yemen in his da'wah. And I don't know of any books, and perhaps there's some articles and stuff, but any books that are translated into English of Abu Hassan Ma'rabi. So why is it so imperative that people are tested with this individual and why is his name he became so much more famous because of the people wrote so many articles and translated and translated the fitna and tested the people with that and spread it around and community split perhaps in the UK it was more relevant I don't know but in America most of the people didn't <coughs> in, in various communities and even in Salafi communities didn't even know anything about this individual until it became such a famous tool to split divide and hit people over the head and that's not in defense of Abu Hassan I believe he's a Mubtadi'a and I've said this to his followers in Yemen that I've met and come across and in Saudi Arabia I've met Yemenis who were defensive and I said I believe he's a Mubtadi'a and the Hajj has been established from many of our ulama like Sheikh Rabi'a and, and many others who wrote extensively but that's sufficient I don't I don't have beef with you I don't care if you if you listen to him I'm just sharing the message to the extent of my ability if you listen to him, that's between you and your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I hope that you don't become misguided from him. But I'm going to test you, I'm going to cut you off now, and you're going to cut me off, and we're going to... This is something uh, very strange. And the point being, how relevant was this for our communities? Then the Shaykh says, look at the fiqh of the Shaykh, I'm so glad that we have treaties like this, because we didn't have these kind of treatises for those who are newer to the Dawah. These things weren't being talked about before. Instead, it was just being implemented that certain individuals, as uh, Tahir mentioned in his lecture about monopolizing Salafia, there were certain individuals who were monopolizing Salafia. They carried the narrative. They're the ones who set the pace, so now people are afraid, even people fear them more than they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go against them. This is true, and I'm not exaggerating, I promise you. Wallahu musta'an. Taib. The people of the Sunnah in the countries of the Caucasus. This means places like um, uh, 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 Chechnya and so, so on and so forth. He said, are fighting each other due to what is being dictated to them. Look at that. Warn against so and so. Do not listen to so and so. And yet by Allah they do not know the basic principles of the Sharia nor the principles of the path, meaning the principles of the Minhaj Ahl Sunnah. In some European countries, by Allah they fought each other with weapons due to you are with Sheikh Fulan and I am with Sheikh Fulan. A Salafi Muslim takes another Salafi Muslim to a disbelieving government in order for him to be arrested and test him in his religion because he has opposed him in his exalting of his Sheikh and praising his minhaj, subhanAllah. Look at these. I, I, I don't think we can um, overestimate the importance of hearing this from a sheikh because if you heard this from me or you heard this from some, uh, you know, some other brother or a talib al-ilm or whoever, you, you wouldn't take it. But at least you now have ulama and some mountains of knowledge like Imam Abdul Masan al abad and others. And before him, Bin Uthameen and Bin Baz addressed it if we go back to their books. But the people don't, it's almost as if they cover those books. Because you don't hear them translating. They don't, you don't hear the statements. But I chant, those people who know Arabic, I want you to go to the books of Bin Uthameen. Look at all his immense fat fatawa about this issue about splitting and 
quickly taking your brother off the minhaj and declaring your brother to be on error and, 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 and deviance and cutting him off. Look at all the statements of bin Uthameen and who from amongst the ulama today is known for fit like bin Uthameen even among Salafi scholars, some of the ones who people put up. I have studied with certain scholars. I love them, but they're not on the level. And I'm just going to drop a name. I'm going to drop a name, so don't get scared. Sheikh Obeid, half of the law ta'ala, one of our ulama. He's not on anywhere in the level of Ben Uthameen. No way. Don't exaggerate his status. Yes, he's a, he's a, he's a, 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 a great scholar of Ahl Sunnah. But they, the scholars have different levels. And look at the benefit, look at, there's many things we could talk about, but I just want you to analyze and look and learn for yourselves. Then the Sheikh said, in fact, reverts to Islam, leave their religion of Islam. When he enters into Islam, he desires Iman. He desires comfort, tranquility, and serenity in his heart. But the reality is that by, by the morning he is argumentative and by the evening he is misguiding. I'm going to stop there real quick. How is it you could follow a menhaj, a methodology, and it doesn't bring you any comfort? Do you think the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is going to cause more confusion, more chaos, more fitna in your life? No, that's not what it's for. So I ask you, especially you, those who are new, there are so many sisters, they're very confused, young sisters in their teens and in their early 20s, and they want the truth, they just want the truth, but they see things in the world very black and white. The Sheikh said, the Sheikh said this as if it's wahi. No, you need to learn what Allah said and his messenger said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then see how the Sheikh's statement goes in accordance with that. So they're rigid, they want the truth, and they're confused. They are confused, and their Islam is distorted, and they don't even know how to pray, some of the people. And I'm going to tell you a true story. I was contacted by a young sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless her from one of the European countries asking me about my position of the Luton Masjid I said because it had already been my positions were already clear I had already mentioned countless times that I don't for one I've never been to the UK outside of Heathrow Airport Number two, yes, I know many brothers from all, a lot of those masajids, brothers who uh, studied with Sheikh Mukbil, brothers who studied in the various Marrakesh of Sunnah there in Yemen and in Saudi Arabia, from everywhere, from Brixton, Cardiff, Luton, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Brixton, of course, and, uh, and many other places, okay? I know many students. I've met hundreds at least, hundreds. I can honestly say hundreds in my years of travel. Taib. But I never stepped foot. I don't know what's going on on the ground. But this individual asked me about a Salafi conference and said only Suhaimi is Salafi. I said, SubhanAllah. I said, where did you get this from? People were in this sister's ear, distorting. So the sister's confused. The scholars have come to see you on a disbelieving soil. But because individuals are whispering, saying Suhaimi, and when you should have said Alama Suhaimi, or Sheikh Suhaimi at least is, is there, but because Sheikh Ibrahim al is there, and because Sheikh so and so and Sheikh so and so, and because these individuals think that they are not Salafi, when great Imams testify to their Salafiyah, when their books and their tapes and their lectures testify to their Salafiyah, but yet confusion. So these are the kind of people that are confused. They don't know to go to the left or the right. Some of them, they don't know how to pray. Some of them, they don't know Surat al-Fatiha properly. Some of them, they have all kind of issues. And that's what you have to realize. And that's what's getting comfortable in your Salafiyah. You should grow. Salafiyah, like Islam in general, you grow and you mature. And, I, and, I will, and I'm going to say that because if you follow for a long time, then you, and, 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 and if Allah favors you to acquire more knowledge. 
then you mature because knowledge, it's like steeping in a tea. Do you think all of our ulama were the same they were 20, 30, 40 years? No. Why do we respect those elders? Because those elders have steeped. They've had years. Look at Imam Abdul Masin. He's been teaching in the Haram, I think, 40 years, maybe more. That's <laughs> prior to that, he had an For 40 years, you've been teaching in the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he's steeped and he's, he's, and so I'm sure some positions have changed. His knowledge has increased. His experience has increased. Likewise, us as lay persons, that we increase in our knowledge. We increase in our knowledge if we're studying. Some people don't, they stay the same their whole life. And some people, they decrease. And we mature. The way we look at issues, we mature. And that's very important. Because that, with the maturity comes fiqh, more fiqh fideen and understanding, more principles, no, knowing and understanding things are not black and white as we want them to be. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.